Previously, I had built a small cold frame to try germinating seeds faster outdoors in early spring. The objective of this experiment was to maximize my planting window during the year by having crops produce earlier than usual. I cleared a space of ground removing my mulch of dried up bits and pieces of plants from last season and decided to sow arugula seeds directly on three rows to be harvested as young salad leaves. Due to the warmer climate with higher humidity inside the cold frame, the seedlings popped out of the ground in no time ready to continue growing. This idea of staggering growth and maximizing the growing season with the help of a cold frame was starting to sound promising. The weather had been absolutely inconsistent at times, being unseasonably warm, creating the danger of overheating the vulnerable seedlings. So I decided to remove the glass cover from the arugula and went about sowing a new crop in a new location. I found a new spot on which to grow another batch of seedlings testing out the powers of this small cold frame. I picked a spot with slightly less sun exposure, seeing that the sunnier spots didn't require protection from the cold as much as they could bank in solar energy by warming up the soil during the day and releasing it by night. Using a glass cover in a more sun exposed area at this point posed more of a risk of temperature soaring during the sunny days to the point of scorching what grew inside. This was early to mid spring and I knew that soon enough I would not need the help of these cold frames anymore. While there were still some chilly nights in the upper 30s and low 40s degree Fahrenheit, many cold tolerant plants could be started directly already. They would just take longer to germinate outside than inside the cold frame. By my estimations the seeds were sprouting twice as fast inside the cold frame as outside, since theoretically a layer of glass can mimic the climate of one month ahead, this made sense. While I was sowing these in March, they would behave like it was April. Instead of growing a new batch of arugula, I decided to grow broccoli rob. This plant likes cooler temperatures and is considered a cool season crop, although many Italians grow it throughout the growing season. While they prefer cool temperatures, much like radish, they don't like frosts and are not as cold hardy as kale, also known as rapini by Italians who happen to be the ones who elevated the slowly plant into culinary stardom. These awesomely bitter greens and florets can sometimes be tricky to get growing right. This was the first time in a long time that I was trying my hand at growing them again. I had tried growing it before with mixed results. While I'm always ready to experiment with new varieties, because I have a relatively small sun exposed area, I try to maximize my harvest sometimes, leaning onto tried and true varieties. Coming up in the next block, it's the opening of arugula harvest. I'll share a simple yet mouthwatering arugula salad recipe to celebrate this early crop. You will not want to miss it right after this commercial. Suburban Homestead is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. I would like to specially thank those who have been watching the advertisements during these videos. If you would like to support more quality content in the channel, you can choose to become a patron through the channel's Patreon or buy art from my Etsy shop. With bowl at hand, I went out to collect my first fully grown arugula leaves. I happen to love the spicy flavors of these leafy greens. What you buy in stores does not come close to the pungency of garden fresh arugula. If you have not tried it fresh, you may not know what it truly is. It's cold again, it was warm for a few days, and I don't know, the plants are kind of confused, but the arugula is doing really well, and it's been growing uh, fast over the, the last few days. This arugula I grew from seed during winter, in a cold frame and at this point it's starting to flower so I know it doesn't have too much more time left before it goes to seed so I'm harvesting it and I'm gonna do a really nice salad this was actually a different batch I had grown earlier in another cold frame it grew slowly during winter establishing its rootstocks to then pump out vigorous growth in large leaves as soon as the weather had warmed up enough. I was looking forward to tasting them 
and was composing a salad recipe on the spot. Highlighting and complementing their strong flavors was my objective. In all honesty, they don't need much to shine other than lime juice, salt, and maybe olive oil. But I picked some of the fresh chives that were bursting with energy and went inside to conclude my salad to celebrate the first arugula harvest of the year. This homegrown variety would be different from all the store-bought arugula bags we end up buying from stores in the dead of winter. I don't know if the commercial varieties were selected for mild flavor to suit the American taste or if they lose their kick hours after harvest being shipped from farm to store. I just know that freshly picked homegrown arugula is almost a completely different beast. A quick rinse under running water washed away any sand or debris from the garden. This plant has been used as a salad green for millennia. The Greeks and Romans were known to use them, even exalting it as a medicinal plant. To complement its flavor, I decided to sliver an apple. I felt that the apple's sweetness would nicely counterpoint the spicy peppery arugula taste. The key would be to cut these slices as thinly as possible with a sharp knife. Arugula was called eruca in Latin, and that Roman name gave rise to the modern names in different languages. I grew up knowing it as hucula, which in a way is pretty close to arugula. It has been known as garden rocket or just rocket, especially in England. It was widely cultivated in medieval times and later during the Victorian age, sometimes being foraged as a wild green. To season the salad, I poured about a teaspoon of white rice vinegar into a little bowl, adding a bit of olive oil. I then dropped the apple slices before they turned brown, fully coating them and adding salt to taste. For some odd reason, arugula was forgotten in the United States during the heyday of iceberg lettuce and fast food drive throughs only to be rediscovered as a gourmet green later on as the fresh food movement came to prominence in the early 2000s. In fact, you would be hard pressed to find it at your local grocery stores in the 90s, when string cheese was probably seen as a food group and salad was only iceberg with a few lonely shreds of carrots drenched in ranch sauce. To further complement the flavors, I finally chopped the fresh garden chives and mix them into the seasoned apple slices. Chives add the aroma and flavor of onion without the pungency, with more sophistication. I personally trace back the rediscovery of arugula to the work of chefs in California, especially around the Bay Area. In fact, Alice Waters, who created the much acclaimed modern edible schoolyard movement, championed the use of fresh locally grown organic produce in her farm-to-table restaurant Chez Panisse. Arugula was among the plants rediscovered in this new American cuisine based on old-world French ideas. This appreciation for fresh food spread into the public at large when local restaurants started to add new fresher options throughout America and the rise of the celebrity chefs and Food Network shows gained the public's attention. Today, many more people know and eat arugula and have grown to love it, but there are still many more dinner plates that need remodeling around the country. Growing and eating fresh is growing freedom and health. I spread the seasoned sliced apples over the arugula and grabbed a few Brazil nuts to finish off the dish. I finely grated the Brazil nuts over everything, adding a dusting of nutty flavor to elevate the salad. This mouth-watering dish was ready to be tasted. Indeed, the flavors were amazing together. The arugula reminded me of childhood with its pungent peppery taste moderated by the sweetness of the apple and complexity of the Brazil nut. This plate was worth the weight of winter. I could only imagine 
all the harvests yet to come.